Here are today's top stories. A founding member of the Communist Party of the Philippines blames Jose Maria Sison for the Plaza Miranda bombing. Mayon Volcano shows new signs of unrest as it spews ash plumes towards two towns in the Bicol region. A congressman and a mayor may face charges for mauling a policeman in Iloilo. And an entire NPA unit fed up with the corruption in the communist group surrenders to the military. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. As the Communist Party of the Philippines celebrated its 50th anniversary, a founding member revealed its involvement in the 1971 Plaza Miranda bombing. They claim that CPP founder Jose Maria Sison masterminded the attack to pursue the group's ideals. Maricor Zapata has the story. Communist Party of the Philippines founding chairperson Jose Maria Sison is the mastermind in the 1971 Plaza Miranda bombing that left nine people dead and more than 90 others injured. This according to one of CPP's founding fathers. In a documentary produced by Sambayanan, Ruben Guevara tagged Sison as the one who gave orders to throw grenades at the gathering. Plaza Miranda bombing ay bahagi lamang ng isang serye ng kampanya na ginawa ng CPP. Ito yung bahagi na sinasabi namin Oakland, big leap forward eh. Pero may pit na patakaran dito na sino man ang magsabi ng kinalaman natin sa Plaza Miranda ay may pinakamataas na kaparusahan. So, pero dumating ang panahon na nang nasa, Bel nasa Isabela na, Nagkukukwento na itong si Danny Cordero, pinanindigan niya na talagang siya, sila, ang naghagis ng granada sa utos ni Joma. Bagamat itinago ito at pinilip na ilihim. Guevara said the CPP also conspired with the government of then Chinese leader Mao Zedong to wage an armed battle. Pakitan namin yung Maryland Revolutionary Situation. May kakayanan na talagang armado yung NP na sumagupa, ipagkakaloob na sa ni Choi Nai yung tulong na pinansyal at armament. Si Fidel Akawili, ito yung nagsaayos ng MD Karagatan. Siya yung nabigyan ng tasking na bumili nung uh, barko na ginamit namin. Former NPA Commander Victor Corpus corroborated Guevara's story saying he was the one who gathered the firearms in Isabela. He was given the mission uh, Talubungin yung mga armas sa eastern shores ng Isabela. Guevara said the fact that the communist struggle has lasted for 50 years shows that Filipinos do not want the ideology as it destroys values of being God-centered and family-oriented. The Sambayanan documentary reveals the various acts of the CPP NPA and its legal fronts to topple the government which includes purging, abusing indigenous tribes, and attempting to directly attack Malacanang. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Malacanang described the 50-year insurgency of the CPP-NPA as a failed rebellion with its founding chairman, Jose Maria Sison, being out of touch with reality. This, as Sison said on the day of CPP's 50th anniversary, that the CPP-NPA remains relevant and would strengthen efforts to oust the president. Panelo says Sison's rebellion only resulted in the loss of lives of promising Filipinos as well as destruction of properties. Panelo also said that many communist rebels were already laying down their arms and surrendering while Sison remained comfortably in exile in the Netherlands since 1987. He encouraged Sison to also surrender before he becomes too weak to do so, stressing that it was an honorable act to accomplish. President Rodrigo Duterte earlier ordered his troops to destroy the Reds and not to subscribe to their five-day holiday ceasefire declaration. The Department of Health, or DOH, reported 11 more fireworks-related injuries as of Wednesday morning. The cases involved males aged between 2 and 49 years who used prohibited fireworks. Five suffered from burns, two needed to be amputated, while four others suffered from eye injuries. 
Meanwhile, a six-year-old boy in Tondo, Manila was poisoned after ingesting the contents of a pili firecracker. Despite the new cases, the DOH says the recorded injuries starting December 21st are now 54% lower from last year. The DOH renews its warning against the use of illegal fireworks such as Watusi, Piccolo, Large Judas Bell, Boga, Goodbye Philippines, and other imported firecrackers. The Philippine National Police appeals to the public to immediately report cases of indiscriminate firing, especially during the New Year's Eve celebration. NCRPO Chief Guillermo Eliazar calls on the public to stay vigilant and promptly report such incidents to the nearest police station or precinct. Aside from the public's vigilance, the PNP would deploy more uniformed policemen in areas where indiscriminate firing of guns and stray bullets happened in the past New Year celebrations. Those reported and caught in act would be arrested immediately. Meanwhile, PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde appealed to gun owners to be responsible and not use their guns to welcome the new year. The PNP skipped gun muzzle sealing this year to show that police are responsible gun users. An anti-communist coalition condemns the Communist Party of the Philippines on its 50th anniversary. Meanwhile, the Department of Finance asks Customs to donate rice to help the poor. More on these and other news from the Metro from Johnny Scabe. Anti-communist groups staged a pro-democracy rally to denounce the rebellion waged by the CPP and PA. The groups condemned the CPP and PA, citing their continuous collection of revolutionary taxes and the inhumane purge against suspected informants within their ranks. They also said the CPP has yet to deliver its promise of social justice for Filipinos. Meanwhile, Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez has ordered Customs Commissioner Ray Leonardo Guerrero to donate 30,000 bags of undocumented rice to aid in the government's anti-poverty and disaster relief programs. The Bureau intercepted the shipment of rice in Zamboanga City. The 30,000 bags are on top of the 16,000 bags earlier turned over by the BOC to augment disaster relief efforts for typhoon victims. In other news, the Department of Social Welfare and Development reports that it has served more than 4 million beneficiaries under its Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino program this year. The DSWD also continues to provide over 82,000 households with access to livelihood opportunities through its Sustainable Livelihood Program. DSWD has also prepared and uploaded to the Land Bank of the Philippines the payroll documents for the unconditional cash transfer grants provided under the TRAIN law. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come? Mayon Volcano shows new signs of unrest as it spews ash plumes towards two towns in the Bicol region. Soldiers in Rizal province stop an attempted attack by rebels on Christmas Day. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. December 13, Webes, Las Piñas City. Pinangunahan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang inaugurasyon ng Las Piñas Drug Rehabilitation Center. Inaasahan makatutulong ito sa mayigit dalawandaang drug-dependent patients. Pinasalamatan ng Pangulo si na former Senate President Manny Villar at asawang si Senator Cynthia Villar na nag-donate na nasabing rehab center. December 14, Viernes, Quezon City. Nagipagpulong ang Pangulo kay Iglesia Ni Cristo Executive Minister Eduardo Manalo na siya ring itinalaga bilang Special Envoy for Overseas Filipinos Concerns. Nagipagsayahan naman ang Pangulo sa kanyang staff ng Idaos ang Office of the President Christmas Party sa Malacanang. December 15, Sabado, Eastern Sama. Matapos ang higit isang daang taong paghihintay, ay sama-samang sinaksihan ng mga residente ng Balangiga at ni Pangulong Duterte ang makasaysayang pagbabalik ng Balangiga Bells. Today's gathering is indeed a time to be truly sentimental as we welcome back our Balangiga Bells. The rest of the Filipino nation joins the Diocese of Borongan in celebrating this historic event. The Bells a return, and it was really 
because of the fervent prayers of the entire Filipino nation. The credit goes to the American people and to the Filipino people. Period. December 18, Martes, Davao City. Dumalo ang Pangulo sa Barangay Summit on Good Governance Region 11 at kinausap ang mga punong barangay. Ako po si Secretary Martin Andanar at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. FIVOLX is monitoring Mayon Volcano as it showed moderate unrest this morning. Mayon spewed a moderate emission of white steam-laden plumes towards the direction of Kamalig and Ginubatan. No damage has been reported. The 16-kilometer radius permanent danger zone is still off-limits to the public as Mayon Volcano remains on alert level 2. FIVOLX says sudden expulsions, lava collapses, Pyroclastic density currents and ashfall are still expected around Mayon's upper slopes. It has urged authorities to implement a 7-kilometer extended danger zone from Anoling and Kamalig to Santa Misericordia and Santo Domingo towns. Pilots are also advised not to fly close to the volcano summit. A congressman and his mayor father may face charges after assaulting a police officer in Gimbal, Iloilo. Iloilo 1st District Representative Richard Garin Jr. reportedly handcuffed and mauled PO3 Federico Macaya while Gumbal Town Mayor Oscar Garin pointed a gun at the policeman. Police Regional Office 6 Director John Bulalacao says the incident stemmed from a commotion on December 22nd involving a son of the member of the Sangguniang Bayan. The congressman accused Makaya of convincing a victim not to file a case against the suspect. Bulalakaw says Congressman Garin has apologized to him for what he has done and also issued a separate statement of his apology. Meanwhile, Bulalakaw relieved Town Police Chief Antonio Monreal Jr. for his non-action and canceled the police detail of the congressman. PRO6 will help Makaya file charges against the Garins. Congressman Garin is the husband of former Health Secretary Janet Garin. The Department of Agriculture is targeting 100,000 hectares for sorghum planting to support rural hog and poultry raisers. Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Piñol said a village-level feed mill would also be established to help farmers produce their own feeds at a lower cost. Most of these lands would be tapped in ancestral domain areas of the indigenous people. Pinol said through the establishment of village-level feed mills, organized rural hogs and poultry raisers could avail of loans from the Department of Agriculture. The agency has come up with its first sorghum pilot farm in San Vicente, Makilala, North Cotabato. The DA has introduced sorghum in the different regions of the country as it develops new sources of grains for its growing livestock and poultry industry. Youth leaders have joined efforts to speed up recovery in Marawi City. This as the National Youth Commission urged the youth to do their part in promoting peace and unity in their communities. More on this from Calvin Penaco. Conflict-affected farmers and fisherfolk households received agricultural input packages from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, in the municipality of Sagyaran. The project targeted 3,800 households in four municipalities, namely Sagyaran, Marantao, Litsaan, Ramain, and Piagapo. The agri-input packages included rice production, corn production, native chickens, mallard ducks, goats, fishery inputs, and rotavators. Each beneficiary also received a packet of assorted vegetable seeds that the beneficiaries can plant and eventually produce vegetables for family consumption while others can be for sale. Each beneficiary household received only one agri-package in order to spread and maximize the benefits for more internally displaced persons or IDPs. 
the FAO project's team leader Mario Corrado, together with representatives from partner groups and organizations, graced the event and oversaw the distribution process. Ito pong programa na ito ay specifically for IDPs na nanggaling sa Marawi at saka yung mga pamilya na magsasaka na pumukup sa kanila. So makapagbangon ulit, makapagtanim ulit, may balik yung ating food production. Kasi hindi tayo pwede umasa lamang sa relief ng ating gobyerno. He added that since the project is unable to accommodate everyone, the beneficiaries need to take good care of the provided assistance, not just for themselves but also for everyone. Ibig sabihin yan, kailangan natin itanim, kailangan natin yan naragaan, para yung hindi nabigyan, hindi nasama sa programa natin, matibigyan natin pag nang-harvest na tayo. The World Food Program, or WFP, and the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP, also contributed to the project by giving rice and cash for work assistance, respectively. Meanwhile, Jalila P. Kasarigan, one of the beneficiaries, thanked FAO and its partner organizations for the assistance that they lent to the IDPs. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyong organisasyon dahil po sa tulong niyo sa aming mga farmer na ako po'y napiling biniyayaan ng kambing. Ngayon po yung mga kambing ko, mayroon, ma, nung nako, natanggap ko po ay maliliit, ngayon po malalaki na sila, mayroon pang mga buntis. Yun po, nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyo. Maraming maraming salamat po. This project is implemented by FAO in partnership with WFP, UNDP, Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, ARMM, Department of Agrarian Reform, or DAR, with funding support from the Central Emergency Response Fund, or SURF, of the United Nations. Its main objective is to improve the food security and agricultural production of farm and fisher families in selected municipalities in Lanao del Sur. For the PNA Newsroom, Calvin Pinaco, Philippine Information Agency. Police in Ilocos Norte report a drop in the province's supply of shabu. Meanwhile, soldiers stop an attack by communist rebels in Rizal province. More on these stories from the provinces from Janice Cabe. In Ilocos Norte, Police Provincial Office reports that the supply of shabu is getting scarce due to the intensified drive against prohibited drugs. Law enforcers arrested 150 drug personalities from January to November this year. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency reported that 520 drug-affected barangays in Ilocos Norte are almost drug-cleared. In Rizal, Government troopers preempted a possible attack by members of the New People's Army in Rodriguez Rizal on Christmas Day. The five-minute encounter left a CAFGU member injured and an undetermined number of rebel casualties. Report says the rebels were planning to attack the Makaingalan patrol base in Barangay Puray in Rodriguez Town, which is a violation of the NPA's self-imposed ceasefire. In Davao del Sur, Government troops faced members of the NPA in Santa Cruz on Christmas Day. The troops seized combat equipment and documents left by the NPA members who were possibly preparing for the Communist Party of the Philippines' 50th anniversary. The Army's 39th Infantry Battalion is on high alert. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, an entire NPA unit fed up with corruption in the Communist group surrenders to the military. Boat makers in Zamboanga stick to the old ways of making sea craft. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Thank you. 
take place, the genuine joy of coming together and eating together. So with that, happy Christmas and Kao Nata! An entire New People's Army unit surrendered to government forces on Christmas Day in Agusan del Sur. The 19 NPA surrenderers yielded before the Army's 41st Infantry Brigade. The group consisted of team leaders and regulars who decided to leave because of corruption within the CPP NPA. They also cited inconsistencies in their propaganda and action, even as some of them could no longer endure the continuous operations of the military. The rebels brought with them several high-power firearms, ammunition, and radios. Major General Ronald Villanueva, commander of the Army's 4th Infantry Division, welcomed the surrender of the NPA combatants and urged the remaining rebels to come down and live normal lives. Three insurgents also surrendered in Bukidnon on December 23, while one yielded in Agusan del Norte the following day. The government is putting up six more Philippine Overseas Labor Offices, or POLO, in several countries where there are Philippine embassies. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said they are coordinating with the Department of Foreign Affairs in creating POLOs in China, Japan, Germany, New Zealand, the United States, and Croatia. The Dole chief urged those who are interested to have the presence of POLOs in their country to apply before the DFA. He added that if they want to have a polo office, they need to ask the DFA and Department of Budget and Management for the funds for such purposes. The polo administers and enforces Dole's policies and programs applicable to overseas Filipino workers or OFWs. And in our foreign news, South Korea and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea held a groundbreaking ceremony to modernize and connect railways and roads across the inter-Korean border. The ceremony was held at Ramun Station in North Korea's border town of Kaesong. The nine-car train carrying about 100 South Korean participants departed from Seoul Station and crossed the military demarcation line into North Korea yesterday morning, Manila time. The participants had lunch in Kaesong and returned by train to the Seoul Station in the afternoon. All railways and roads between the two Koreas have been severed since the Korean War ended with an armistice. South Korean President Moon Jae-in and DPRK leader Kim Jong-un agreed to modernize and eventually connect railways and roads along the eastern and western Korean peninsula. Traditional boat building remains alive in many parts of the country, such as Mindanao. These boats are known to stand the test of time and even compete with their modern counterparts. Maricor Zapata has the story. In a coastal barangay, 35 kilometers from downtown Zamboanga City, the craft of boat building has existed since time immemorial. The Sangali Boatyard is located in Sitio Malasugat along a large cove where the Zamboanga Fishing Port Complex and an adjacent ship repair yard or varadero are also found. No one knows exactly when it started, but inhabitants of this village have been building a great variety of wooden boats. According to legends, the first royal datus in the country traveled by boats from Indonesia to establish pre-Islam and pre-Spanish sultanates in different parts of the archipelago. Wooden hull boats, such as Tempel, a fast-running boat, are preferred here than boats made of fiberglass, which crack under the sun. Similar types of wooden motor boats common in the region are the Kompit, Jungking, and Lepa Lepa. The Kompit is large enough to carry tons of cargo or company-sized passengers. The medium-sized Jungking is used to ferry passengers or cargo between shorter distances. The Lepa Lepa is a round-bottom temple-sized craft native to Tawi-Tawi. Other types of boats seen in the region are the Basing, Kulibo, Bugo, and the iconic Vinta. Basnig is a slim-built fishing boat without triggers and tall masts. The Kulibo is a small boat with short outriggers and fitted with an inboard engine. The Bugo uses a paddle to move about and can be powered by an engine. 
The Vinta is a sailboat, often romantically portrayed in seascape photos. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's stories. A founding member of the Communist Party of the Philippines blames Jose Maria Sison for the Plaza Miranda bombing. Mayon volcano shows new signs of unrest as it spews ash plumes towards two towns in the Bicol region. A congressman and a mayor may face charges for mauling a policeman in Iloilo. And an entire NPA unit fed up with the corruption in the communist group surrenders to the military. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And uh, since it is only a few more days to go before the new year, let's all pray for a new start in everything. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.